Welcome to the jungle. Things are about to get wild. Or maybe just cuddly? Leading intel from the ship tells me this planet is known for its remarkably cute life forms. And we're here to examine the patterns of evolution that led these critters to have such adorable phenotypes. Time to take a closer look. When two populations achieve reproductive isolation, they're classified as separate species. Looking backwards in time with genetic information and fossils, scientists can estimate when two populations were similar enough to be classified as a single species. This point in the past where two species shared a lineage is called their most recent common ancestor. Of course, all life emerged from one common ancestor billions of years ago, so any two species have a common ancestor at some point in history. But in general, more closely related species will share a more recent common ancestor. Like these blue and pink space dillos that evolved from the ancestral yellow dillo at this branch point. Substantial genetic differences accumulate once two populations undergo speciation. You can see that as these tree branches diverge, the allele flowers on them also change, representing genetic changes over many generations. Usually, the accumulation of genetic differences between species over many generations also causes phenotypic changes. Those changes provide clues as to what selection pressures each lineage faced and how those pressures shaped each lineage's evolution. We're going to take a look at three patterns of evolution that can arise based on selection pressures. Divergent, convergent, and parallel evolution. Let's start with divergent evolution, which occurs when closely related lineages face very different selection pressures. This leads the lineages to evolve highly different phenotypes, despite being closely related. For example, this yellow space dillo split into two lineages after the appearance of a predator on the top branch created a selection pressure that gave better protected dillos a reproductive advantage. This led spikes in armor to become common in the blue lineage. Without the pressure of predation, Puff and Fluff were selected for in the pink lineage, as they provide superior snuggles, which we all know is a serious reproductive advantage. A different pattern of evolution can occur when species who share a not-so-recent common ancestor face similar selection pressures and ultimately evolve similar phenotypes. This pattern is called convergent evolution. Even though these species aren't closely related, just looking at them, you might assume that they were. On Earth, think of sharks and dolphins. You might guess that because both are sleek, gray, and finny, that means they're closely related. But actually, it turns out this phenotype is just really good for surviving in the ocean. And in this sketch, both the blue bear guana and red fox bun evolved swingy tails to get around this selection snake. We can tell that they're distantly related by looking at the ancestor at each branch point. Notice that the ancestors are quite different from each other, even though the species that evolved at the branch tips are so similar. Finally, parallel evolution occurs when closely related species experience similar selection pressures, leading their phenotypes to remain similar over time. On Earth, some mammals in Australia underwent parallel evolution after Australia's landmass broke away from current-day South America millions of years ago. In Australia today, you'll see animals that look a lot like mice, wolves, and cats, but are marsupials instead of placental mammals. Here, the punk rock space sloth and blue mainstream sloth have closely related ancestors hanging out at the branch points, and both face the selection pressure of needing to collect tasty space fruit for food. So both lineages evolved similar long toes for collecting food. Now, what selection pressure makes you grow a mohawk, and how do I make sure my great-great-great-grandkids get one? It can be difficult to tell the difference between convergent evolution and parallel evolution. The key difference is that in convergent evolution, two species are distantly related, but their phenotypes become more similar over time as they face similar selection pressures. On the other hand, in parallel evolution, species are closely related to begin with and their phenotypes stay similar over time, even as they evolve in isolation from each other. Well, there you have it, the three major patterns of evolution. To sum it up, over many generations, the phenotypes of different species can become more different or more similar, depending on what selection pressures each species faces. First, there's divergent evolution, where closely related lineages face different selection pressures and evolve different phenotypes. Next, in convergent evolution, distantly related lineages face similar selection pressures and evolve similar phenotypes. Finally, in parallel evolution, closely related species face similar selection pressures and evolve similar phenotypes. Well, these critters are so cute I could stay here forever. But I better get back to the ship and forward this info onto Earth. Captain says they need it for the koala panda prototype? Later! <laughs>